Let's take a few minutes and talk about schematic diagrams. Everything you do in the HVAC industry and many other technical industry all come back to what we call schematics. Now, schematics are a map of the wiring and of the sequence of operations of any piece of equipment or portion of equipment. So sometimes you're gonna see schematics that look like this, okay? But they're really nothing to worry about because we break them down into individual components and that's what we're gonna be talking quite a lot about over the next couple of lessons. So put this big diagram with multiple components and different symbols out of mind for a minute. This is where we're gonna be in the end. Okay, but we have to start simple. So we have a difference between pictorial diagrams and schematic diagrams. Pictorial diagrams show how components are actually wired. However, pictorial diagrams become cumbersome when there's many components involved. Schematic diagrams present the logic of a circuit in an organized fashion. Schematic diagrams are less cluttered because they use symbols to represent components. So if I jump back one slide, having just shown these two examples, okay, we have the pictorial up here at the top, we have the schematic over here on the right. Let me jump back one slide, okay? Which diagram do we have here? Do I have a pictorial or do I have a schematic? Remember, the latter schematics or schematic diagrams use symbols to represent the different components. That's correct. This one is a ladder diagram or schematic, not a pictorial. So let's move again. Okay, ladder diagrams have a tendency to look like a ladder. A ladder diagram is arranged with power supply lines drawn vertically as the legs of a ladder. Each horizontal line contains one load and its control switches. Each load line may be numbered for ease of identification, but is not always numbered, okay? A lot of manufacturers do not put numbers on the side here. So, but again, let's look at it. I have L1, which is the ladder on the left, or the I have L2, which is the leg on the right. Okay, so we have voltage on the left and right side. Now across the rungs of the ladder, is each one of my circuits with a load. So in this case, and we haven't talked about symbols yet, so I don't expect people to know this, we have a crankcase heater. Then we have a, a normally open, normally closed set of relay contacts or compressor contacts. Okay, we have a high pressure switch. Then I have a load, which is labeled a coil. This is not how you'll, if you're in classes, this is probably not how you'll draw this load. Okay, it's just an example. Then I have a low pressure switch. So again, we have a load controlled by a bunch of switches. Up here, I have a load without any switches, but there's a specific reason for that that's always energized. Here on my third rung, I have a load, which is my indoor fan motor, with again, a normally open set of contacts. So uh, each load is on a line by itself most often. Most loads in the HVAC industry are not wired in series, they're wired in parallel. And we'll talk more about that in a few minutes. So when you're reading a wiring schematic, okay, follow a few simple rules. Schematics are read like a book, top to bottom, left to right. There must be a complete circuit for current to flow through a component. Electrical contacts and switches are always shown in their normal position. That's in their power off position. When a relay is energized, all of its contacts will change position. Every normally open contact will close. All normally closed contacts will open. Switches or components that are used to provide function of stop are normally closed and they're wired in series. Switches or components that are used to provide the function of start are normally open and wired in parallel. So if we go back to my original schematic, okay, 
This is shown in its normal position, which means it is not powered, and this is just how it's wired. So again, if we're looking at the last rule, switches that are used to provide start are shown in their open position. So again, I have a contact here. It's normally open. Okay, that's how it's shown. Nothing is running, no voltage is passing, no current is passing. Okay, here, these are normally closed. Okay, if I took a reading from an ohm reading from here to there, I would have a path for electricity to flow through that load. However, there's a pressure switch here that's normally open, and there's a contact here that's normally open. So there's no current coming through this leg of electricity. So again, when you see a big schematic, break it down into individual pieces. We're going to read it from top to bottom, left to right, just like you would a book. Okay, so if you take a look at this start-stop push-button circuit, okay, we're not worried really about the operation. I'm more worried about the components. Notice there's no complete circuit to the motor starter coil, which is right here, okay? There's no complete circuit because the auxiliary contacts M are open. When the start button, hang on. When the start button is pressed, in other words, someone presses down here on the start button, the contacts will close and the motor will run. Okay, so what we do here is we complete a path of electricity to my motor relay coil. That in turn closes M. Notice they're all labeled M. Okay, so my norm, when this coil is energized, we're going to close M and M, and we're going to run the motor. Okay, now the circuit will remain energized until the stop button is pressed, interrupting the current flow to the M coil. So if someone presses this, all of a sudden this and this will open. So the whole point of this is basically we wanted to point out the two different types of schematics, the pictorial and the latter. Okay. And we want to basically show you that if you break every single larger schematic down into smaller pieces, you will not get lost. And we're going to talk much more about schematics, but this was just an overview.